Okay. So today we'll be starting the accounts payables uh, option, right? So let us look into today's agenda. We'll be covering the P2P cycle, which is procure to pay cycle, uh, and we'll have an overview of it. And then uh, we'll move to purchase order types, then the business units and shared service centers. And we'll look into what reference data sharing means. And then uh, we'll talk about invoicing. Okay. So that will be our today's agenda. So let's move to the next slide. So what is uh, uh, procure to pay? Now, uh, uh, Dura, you are into payables, right? So what is a, uh, yes. yes uh, so what do, you, what do you have to say about procurement? You must be knowing what procurement is, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so what is procurement in just general sense? What is a P2P cycle? P2P cycle, um, it's an, uh, yeah, you have the figure right in front it's of you. It enables the integration mm, of department, mm -hmm. account payable department. Mm -hmm. Um, there is a uh, linking the procurement process and the financial department now. Hmm. Okay, yeah, fine. Yeah, this uh, contains hmm. supply management, hmm. purchase order, requisition, receiving, hmm. invoice reconciliation, hmm. accounts payable. Good. Okay. Anyways, uh, I'll tell you what, what exactly procurement means. Uh, procurement is uh, sometimes even referred to as purchasing, okay, uh, which means uh, refers to a business practice of, uh, you know, acquiring goods and services to accomplish the goals of the enterprise. So it is simply the uh, process of identifying what the organization needs and uh, buying for it. Okay, so that is basically a procuring uh, things for your day-to-day uh, -day business activities. So uh, the procure to pay cycle is uh, vital to an organization, right? So in this process, uh, the organization buys and receives goods or services from its vendors or suppliers and then makes uh, necessary payments to it. So the P2P uh, process flow involves uh, two modules or options, as you say, the procurement and the payables uh, option, which is account, accounts payables. So Oracle's uh, procure to pay is an uh, integrated solution that uh, links purchasing and the uh, payables to maximize the return on invested capital. Okay, so uh, the, uh, with the Oracle procure to pay, uh, companies can reduce their uh, you know cost of uh, uh, you know uh, improve uh, cost uh, the cost of uh, you know uh, the production or even even improve their margin. And uh, that streamlines uh, your whole, uh, you know, procure to pay process to improve your uh, working capital. Okay, so basically in a quick summary, if I have to say this, uh, this process flow involves uh, capturing the demand of a product or a service, uh, which uh, then facilitates uh, quotations from suppliers, then uh, converting those quotations into purchase orders, then after which you receive the, uh, you know, material and uh, finally, uh, uh, you release the payment for the vendor. Okay, so that is the basic, uh, you know, process uh, overview of how procure to pay process uh, goes on. So let's look into the flow of uh, uh, P2P. So here you can see, see, here you can see the whole procure to pay flow. The process, uh, you know, begins with the demand. Okay, so then uh, the demand is recorded in the form of a requisition. Okay, then the requisition is used as a base uh, for requesting supplier quotations. Okay, there will be different suppliers will be quoting different rates. So then uh, once the supply quotations uh, then are entered into the uh, application for comparison. Okay, so after that, uh, based on the analysis and the best uh, product and uh, price choice, the organization will uh, award a purchase order to the chosen supplier. Okay. Then uh, the supplier will then uh, uh, you know ship and send the material uh, or provide the service to the uh, organization. And finally, the organization will book the invoice to pay the supplier. Okay. Then the cash management uh, you know uh, is basically is a module or an option uh, that handles uh, statements from uh, banks and integrates with the 
multiple Oracle cloud uh, applications, such as the payables and the receivables, okay, and the payrolls also. So basically, cash management enables you to reconcile. Uh, you were mentioning about invoice uh, reconciliation and all that. No? So that all happens here in the cash management. So it basically enables you to reconcile payments. You created an Oracle payments against your uh, bank statements, okay. So uh, why is that you do a, you know, uh, why, do you, why do you reconcile a bank statement? Okay, so reconciling your bank statements uh, helps you to see uh, if there are any irregularities in the bank statements, like, you know, uh, you would have entered wrong amounts, or maybe there must be du duplication of journal entries or any other data entry errors, no? So that and all will get rectified in the uh, reconciliation uh, in the cash management. Okay, so this is basically the flow of, uh, you know, procure to pay. And I, I think uh, I had uh, taken this class about encumbrance accounting also. That also was uh, purely based on P2P cycle, uh, did I? So you are uh, familiar no, with that, no? So anyways, as you are working in that, you'll be able to relate it, uh, the whole cycle with it. Ravi, uh, you're, you're clear with the uh, P2P flow, how it goes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. fine. Okay. So let's uh, move on to the purchase order types. Okay, so purchasing uh, provides four types of, uh, you know, uh, purchase orders, basically the uh, uh, standard purchase order, the planned purchase order, blanket purchase agreement and contract purchase agreement. So let us see into detail as to what all these, uh, you know, four uh, types of purchase order means. So basically, uh, the standard purchase orders, uh, usually you generally create uh, the standard purchase orders for one time purchase of various items. Okay, so you create standard POs when you know the details of the goods. Okay, so you know the terms and conditions, you know the goods and services, the pricing, quantity, the delivery schedule, and which can be encumbered or releases, uh, sorry, uh, the uh, if you are if you have enabled the encumbrance in it so you'll be knowing all the details of it okay so then if you uh, uh, so that in in standard purchases basically you know all the details of everything okay so this is called as a standard purchase then moving on to the next one is the uh, blanket purchase uh, agreement okay here what you do is you create uh, this uh, blanket po agreements when you know the detail of the goods or services you plan to buy from a specific uh, supplier, okay, in a period, but you do not yet know the detail of your delivery schedules, okay? You do not know the detail when it should be uh, delivery, delivered to your uh, organization. So you can use blanket purchase agreements to specify the negotiated prices for your items before actually you purchase them. Okay, so usually a blanket uh, purchase agreements can be created for a single organization or maybe with a shared, you know, by different business units of the organization, which are called as the global uh, blanket agreements. Okay, and when you're, uh, uh, you know, having business units in different, uh, you know, uh, uh, countries. Okay, so you can uh, use a global blanket uh, agreements for that. Right. So then uh, the, here you have this blanket releases, okay, under the blanket purchase agreements. You know, what, that does, what does that mean? You can issue a blanket release against a blanket purchase agreement to place the actual order. See, as long as the release is within the blanket agreement efficiency, effectivity date, uh, you can, you know, release it, uh, release the blanket uh, to, your, uh, to your suppliers. In case you use a encumbrance accounting, you can encumber each release. So basically, this is, you don't know all these uh, details in it. This is where you can have your uh, negotiated prices and late before your actual purchase. And when you, you know, finally decide on uh, uh, the pricing and you know the quantity and all, that gets converted into your standard uh, purchase order. Okay, so that's one, another type of uh, uh, purchase agreement. Then you have the contract uh, purchase agreement. Here, uh, you create uh, the contract uh, purchase agreement with your supplier to agree on specific terms and conditions, okay, without indicating uh, any other details like the goods, uh, services, or how much quantity you want, the pricing, nothing. You have, you know, your predefined, you put on, you put in your terms and conditions, okay, without uh, putting any of these details into it. Then you can later issue a standard purchasing orders referring your uh, contracts. So you attach this standard purchase order. Uh, uh, along with this contract purchase agreement. 
okay so that is a contract uh, purchase agreement uh, and then we'll go to uh, you can even have your global uh, contract purchase agreements like suppose if you have business units operating in different countries you know you can you buy throughout your enterprise and you can leverage uh, them for your advantage okay so you can say that okay fine as i'm you know buying in a you know huge quantities which are uh, you know being distributed to different countries so uh, i need a discount of so and so amount and all that so depending on your terms and conditions you can make an agreement with your supplier then the standard po will be attached to it okay so that is your contract purchase agreement and then comes the planned purchase order so now a planned po is a long term agreement okay committing to buy items or services from a single source so basically if you have a good uh, you know um, rapo with your uh, suppliers and you've been doing uh, you know a lot of business since a very long time so usually you will have a very long agreement uh, with a particular uh, supplier so wherein you will uh, specify a tentative delivery uh, schedules and all details of goods or services uh, that you want to buy uh, you know and the quantities and the estimated costs and all that then you can release your uh, schedule release or something called a schedule release you issue a schedule releases against a planned uh, po to place the actual order okay so if you have an encumbrance accounting also you can use the planned purchase order to uh, reserve funds for long term agreements okay so this is what uh, different types of uh, you know purchase orders are usually people uh, you know go for a standard purchase order only these two are used uh, in you know in terms wherein uh, you have uh, business across the world okay uh, wherein your businesses are uh, you know distributed among different countries Uh, your bus are distributed in in different countries there uh, usually people the companies go for these two kind of uh, agreements okay so any doubt here can we move ahead yes ma'am okay Fine. yeah next is the business uh, units and the shared service centers now uh, here uh, i have anyways showed this slide earlier as well okay so you know what a legal entity but still this is uh, in the accounts table uh, you know uh, before configuring that is when we start configuring your business units first okay so let's uh, discuss in detail as to again what is all this and here we can uh, see the vision corporation okay which is uh, which operates in uh, you know countries such as the U us okay the uh, the france and the uk Okay, you know, right? Uh, EMEA, as I had mentioned, it's Europe, uh, uh, Middle East, and Africa. Okay, the stand stands for that, right? They okay. have two divisions. One called is North, uh, the, North, the North American division, and the EMEA division. Under North America, they have one uh, primary ledger, which is shared by two legal entities. Okay, and uh, under the EMEA, they have uh, one primary ledger for uh, uh, one uh, legal entity for France, and the other for uh, UK, which is again uh, each of these uh, legal entities has individual primary ledgers. Okay, the reason being they have different uh, currencies, so it's better for them to have different uh, you know primary ledgers for their accounting purposes. Whereas here you can see US has uh, two legal entities, under which two business units, and also with France and uh, UK you have uh, each uh, one business unit each for each uh, legal entity. okay then uh, uh, here you have this uh, if you can see here there is something called as corporate bu shared services center okay so this share this is the third uh, bu uh, th i mean us bu 3 okay which is uh, shared among shared with all the four uh, business units here okay us 1 2 france bu and uk bu now this shared services bu can carry out processes for all the legal entities okay uh, such as your uh, procurement and payments okay so this shared service strategy has a lot of advantage such as you get you know when you do uh, you know as i said talked about the contract uh, purchase agreements you know that works out in uh, uh, shared service centers when one particular bu is a shared uh, service center wherein it will you know talk uh, it will negotiate with the supplier and get uh, good discounts on your purchases and you know you get even uh, uh, 
the payments and you have a lot of advantages uh, while you are having a shared service uh, center okay so these are uh, this is basically for an overall simplification of the process so this is a new feature uh, in uh, you know um, fusion oracle fusion so basically uh, let me get into exactly what legal entity means and the bus and then the shared service centers okay so uh, legal entity basically is an organization okay that uh, incurs financial transactions such as your invoices receipts payments everything okay so legal entities are the ones uh, which actually makes uh, purchases and owns the assets okay of the business the physical and financial of the uh, it takes care of your physical and financial assets of the enterprise okay so all these legal entities are lawfully registered and recognized as a company and a related entity all right and this is legal entities are the ones which pays uh, the tax to the government so each legal uh, entity each legal entity has a separate legal identifier one second Sorry. Yeah. So as I as I mentioned, each uh, legal entity has a separate legal identifier. Now, what is a legal entity identifier? See, legal identifier is a twenty digit alphanumeric code that identifies your legal entity participating in a financial transactions. So LEI, which is called as a legal entity in, uh, identifier, is a reference code. Okay, it's a reference code for each. Uh, uh of your legal entity is it is like a barcode you know which is used across your market supermarkets you have seen this barcode so the same kind of a thing is given to each legal entity uh, identifier i mean it's a very unique code which is given to each uh, legal entity which when it gets uh, registered okay so same way uh, uh when this is basically a reference code okay given to a legal entity which is uh, engaged in a financial transaction so this is usually given by the uh, you know global uh, legal entity uh, identifier foundation okay all these uh, it's actually this is operating under all the g20 countries right even india is uh, one of the participants of the g20 countries okay so okay. and even in india it, they have made it uh, compulsory for um, uh companies which you know do the business for about about 500 uh, five, sorry 5 crores uh, it is a must for them to get a legal identity identifier okay that's in india so now each legal entity has a separate legal identifier and that conducts different aspects of a business right so the transactions being carried out by legal entities okay are then uh, you know accounted to a business unit Okay. okay so on behalf of these legal entities your business units are the ones which will do your day to day uh, transactions so basically the transactions of a legal entity okay are then recorded to a primary ledger for statutory reporting okay you can see there is any uh, primary ledger for uh, legal entity okay on behalf of this the bus work for them okay It, the bus work for the uh, legal entity now uh, now a business unit can perform many uh, business functions in oracle fusion applications now in oracle ebs uh, business units were called as operating units right ravi so uh, the operating units yeah, yes. uh, yeah the operating units were uh, assumed to perform all the business functions okay uh, in ebs and while in uh, oracle people soft okay the people soft erp which is uh, owned by oracle itself in oracle people soft each business unit had one specific business function okay so as ebs had one operating unit which used to you know conduct all the business operations people soft had uh, one business unit for only one uh, you know function okay now the what uh, oracle fusion applications did it blended these two models of what of ebs and uh, people soft okay and the business uh, define which allows defining the business units with one or many business functions now in business in oracle fusion a business unit can do one function or it can even do multiple functions so basically okay. as i said it has uh, you know uh, blended both the uh, features of uh, people soft as well as ebs and uh, allowed uh, you know the users of fusion to define business according to their requirements okay 
so that is uh, one thing and uh, let's move on to the here are you clear with all this right what a legal yes, entity and bu is okay fine ravi you are also clear with it okay yeah yeah okay fine then moving on let me just give an example here okay uh, the buddy corp power corporation which has uh, two divisions namely pharmaceutical and uh, buddy power herbal okay under division pharmaceutical we have legal entity india legal entity uk then the uh, division buddy power herbal has legal entity usa and legal entity japan now under this we have legal entity india has two uh, you know um, uh, business units which are only into one bu is taking care of the manufacturing that is it and the bu2 takes care of only sales okay whereas the uh, legal entity of uk under pharmaceutical and the legal entity uh, i mean sorry the bu under usa legal entity of herbal they are taking care of only sales and whereas in the legal entity of japan again which has same like uh, india it has uh, two bus under which one bu is taking care of manufacturing and the other which is taking care of sales okay so now again as i already mentioned the oracle uh, fusion applications allows defining a relationship between bus to select which bu would provide services to the other bus okay so that is your corporate bu so uh, in oracle ebs this was known as multi organization uh, multi org access control you remember uh, ravi nebs multi org access control yeah moac yeah yeah moac so this was a feature there that means uh, that users who work in a shared service center have the ability to get access okay and process the transactions on behalf of many bus okay so that is a feature here in uh, fusion now fusion application support shared uh, service centers in two ways okay uh, now with bu security which allows you uh, shared service uh, okay shared uh, shared service employees to process transactions uh, for other bus who are called as clients now for this corporate bu which is the shared service center bu 1 2 3 uh, 5 7 8 are the clients it is called as a client bu for corporate bu okay now this was the foundation of the uh, moac okay which is the multi org access control in the eb uh, ebs now in fusion the service provider model expands on this uh, capability to allow a bu and its employees in a shared service center to work on transactions of the client in earlier version of ebs they could only you know process say uh, you know uh, uh, the manufacturing uh, department you know the bu will actually raise requisition and do all that till po then uh, after the po is uh, submitted and all that they would just only do the processing of it wherein you they will clear your payments and all that okay this was in the ebs but now with the fusion what they have done they have given access for the corporate bu itself to you know uh, uh, work on the whole transactions of uh, on on behalf of other bus all right so the whole you know manufacturing they are the bu1 will uh, concentrate only on the manufacturing part okay uh, receiving of uh, you know raising requisitions and converting them into pos and then you know making invoice payments and all will be taken care by the corporate bu this bu1 will only concentrate on your uh, manufacturing okay the rest of the things will be done by this bu so basically what is happening here you are reducing your staff in bu1 wherein you know the corporate bu is taking care of that uh, you know process the work uh, of those transactions uh, uh, here in the corporate bu okay the bu 1 uh, process the work uh, transactions and everything and even for bu 7 everything is taken care by the corporate bu they are only concentrating on the manufacturing where the plant will be put and they will manufacture all the goods and services that they that they are into okay you you got the point between the shared uh, uh, service center and uh, this one the corporate bu uh, durai yeah, yes ravi ma'am could you yeah. repeat one again ma'am okay see uh, okay see now uh, bu1 is doing manufacturing bu2 is doing sales okay? okay now what is the use of corporate bu here see now in ebs as i said uh, which uses a multi org access control it can do the processing of all the other bus like suppose in the manufacturing uh, bu 
uh, you have okay. the manufacturing do you know there and there you employ people who will take care of your requisition then they will uh, you know uh, transfer it uh, convert it into po and all that and uh, okay. imagine that uh, the corporate do you will take care of your uh, invoice payments okay that okay. was the only job which was uh, been done in ebs in e business suite now with the fusion okay. what uh, added advantage is they do the whole working the whole uh, transactions from a to z everything is taken care by corporate bu see here you put a manufacturing plant in bu1 okay to produce your uh, pharmaceutical medicines and all that so you hire employees only for your plant your manufacturing plant you are not hiring your okay. hr or anybody or you know any procurement department nothing okay You, all that is being taken care by your uh, corporate bu okay, okay this will okay. this will raise your requisition the, the corporate bu will you know convert that into approval this will pay your employees who are into your plant so you don't have a separate uh, hr a uh, separate uh, you know uh, uh, payables department here nothing all will okay. be taken care by your corporate bu so you are okay. only concentrating on your manufacturing That's yeah, that's all. Same is the case with sales. The rest of the other things you're not, uh, you know, uh, planning. Your payment of even the sales employees, the sales department will have employees. Okay, you will not have a separate HR for that. You will have to contact your corporate BU. So here the HR okay. uh, will be, you know, taking care of all your salaries and releasing your salaries on time. So all those extra services, extra departments, you know, you can uh, put it under one co uh, corporate BU, which will be shared. Okay, which which uh, here this corporate BU employees will take care of all your other uh, processes of your uh, client BUs. As I mentioned, these are the client BUs for your corporate BU. Okay, okay. right. Okay, so this okay. is basically right. yeah corporate BU, which is uh, a shared service center. Okay. 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 Got it right. Any more doubts? I'll clear yes, it. Yes, ma'am. Okay, fine. Good. Clear, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Fine. We'll go to the next slide. So, reference data sharing. So this is one uh, new feature uh, which was not available in the EBS. Okay. So let us understand what uh, reference data sharing is. Okay. So the reference uh, data sharing means um, the use of RDS. RDS meaning uh, reference data sets. Okay. RDS means reference data sets. so the reference data sharing features the use of uh, rds okay i'll be i'll be using the term rds okay so please do not get confused with reference data sharing i mean rds is part of reference data sharing itself but rds is reference data sets okay so uh, the reference um, data sharing features the use of uh, rds to which the reference data is assigned okay so uh, basically rds in oracle fusion applications uh, allows either the sharing of master data objects you are aware of what master data objects are basically it's a database of all the customers vendors and suppliers you, you must be knowing okay. a, a master data no the right you would have come across okay. that yeah okay ravi okay. you know what master data objects are right uh must no ma'am See, master data it meaning it's an yeah, database. correct, correct. The whole database, you know, of all your clients, your suppliers, your vendors, everything related to that particular enterprise will have all the data which will be collected and placed in master data objects. Okay, so that's what okay. master data means. Okay. Now, in as I mentioned, uh, as I said, RDS in uh, Fusion allows. either the sharing of the master data objects like your payment terms and all that all the details okay. then rds allows sharing data across sorry one second yeah we just we have 10 more minutes right okay so this uh, this uh, the rds allows sharing of data across bus or you can make it exclusive to a specific bu okay that is what is reference data sharing you can you can set data okay either to a specific uh, business unit or you can share across your uh, business units like in the shared service center in the previous slide that has set data you know to share all the access of all the information of all the other client bus for the shared service center okay right you got it but here i'll i'll just show you here one second i'm so sorry okay. one second 
but here you can even you can even set a data wherein you can put a condition saying that bu2 cannot see the details of bu1 but the corporate okay. bu can you know see all the information and access all the information of all the client views okay okay okay, okay. that is reference data sharing okay one second sir okay now here you can see uh, uh, see uh, okay like uh, like even the payment terms you know in your uh, uh, production uh, in the procurement also you can put a condition saying that you know one bu cannot access as i mentioned bu1 cannot access bu2s uh, uh, you know details uh, that way you, uh, this is the main feature of the uh, reference data sharing okay so it basically uh, uh, partitions okay or divides the master data objects on which the bus get access to okay so there are uh, two seeded uh, rds one is which the uh, common set okay seeded you know what common set is right sorry set sir you know what common set is right you know what seed you know what seed sorry not the common set you know what seeded means right uh dore yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah what is seeded meaning what is the meaning of seeded it's already default in uh, yeah 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 it's all predefined okay predefined so, okay yeah right so you have uh, 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 you have this um, common set okay data which is uh, uh, data sets uh, which is already seeded okay this allows the access uh, of master data objects across all views okay which is common Okay. okay this can be accessed even if you have views in different countries they also can have access if you set the rds to common okay then you have okay. the enterprise okay then you have the enterprise uh, here you can set the uh, rds which allows access of master data objects to the specific view as i just uh, you know showed it in the previous uh, slide saying that view 2 cannot have access to view uh, view 1 so you have set a specific Uh, access bu1 can see only bu1's uh, data okay it has access to only bu1 okay so here okay. most of the organizations uh, create uh, new enterprise reference data uh, depending on uh, their need okay like as in this figure uh, you can see that both the types of the reference datas are sharing right even in the enterprise you can share it even in the common set you can share it okay so now now this user this particular user can see that both the types of the reference data sharing which is the user can access the data assigned to a specific set okay which is the uh, you know uh, the uh, uk business unit which again contain uh, contains your uh, uk location set which is london oxford and cambridge okay so he has okay. an access for this is your enterprise set okay wherein he okay. can access your uh, enterprise uh, access data where this person has been given uh, access to your common set also wherein he can see the details of your tokyo paris and berlin okay so this is he okay. is part of your shared service bu the corporate bu that i just showed you showed it to you in the previous slide he is part of the corporate bu where he has uh, you know the reference data set has been put in such a way that he has access to all the business units whereas a person sitting in uh, london uh, bu will not have access okay. to your oxford or cambridge or uh, okay. say tokyo paris or berlin you can even put a okay. rds say, uh, saying you can access only for the location uk like even the london guy can access oxford uh, uh, you know details or the cambridge guy can uh, you know access oxford you know vice versa they all three can access all three that is under the uk location but the uk location people cannot access data of say tokyo paris or berlin so this is basically okay. this is your reference data sharing wherein you uh, put your uh, reference data sets so that uh, you can limit your access or grant access of uh, sharing your master data objects right okay. so this is okay. what uh, reference data sharing means which is an exclusive uh, feature in uh, oracle fusion which was not available in the uh, ebs okay. okay all right so let's uh, move ahead okay this is an example here now okay you have business unit this is a set 
assignment that you have given you have business unit us 1 2 and 3 you have a reference data object saying your accounts receivable payment terms ar payment terms okay for all these three uh, us uh, business units now the you you know uh, the reference data set name when you are configuring that when you are defining your reference data set it is a normal convention okay it's a common uh, uh, convention to put your bus uh, name as well okay to assign your okay. bus name so that you know you don't have a confusion later so that's the reason here the reference data set name is put as us1 set for you bu us2 it's been put as us2 set and for uh, bu us3 it has put as uh, it's been put as common whereas you know us3 okay. will be able to uh, access the other uh, uh, datas okay let's now see uh, we have set up a data saying the reference data set name us1 set net 30 now here net meaning uh, th this is a uh, payment term okay uh, correct 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 exactly exactly you you know ravi what this means net 30 no no ma'am yeah durai would you like to explain it so yeah, net 30 means the days uh, ravi okay date for this vendor we have to pay uh, within 30 days yeah like okay 30 correct. days is a payment term yeah so basically oh. payment is due 30 days after the invoice date Okay. That is net thirty. So here, a user under a specific uh, business unit is trying to create an AR uh, um, AR invoice. Okay. Now, using the set assignment and set uh, setup data provided, what are the payment terms uh, visible to the user? Say for the user under BU US one. Now, this is a set. Now, now you tell me, uh, a user of uh, US. Set one. What are the payment terms that he can view, that he can access? Take your time. Not a problem. You can access US one set. Now, which is common. that? Uh, okay, tell me, tell me which uh, the net, which one, which one, uh, which one will uh, the US one set access to? One is net thirty. Net thirty. And net forty five. Right. Net thirty immediate. Right. Correct. That's right. Exactly. Ravi, uh, Ravi, you got the point. Yeah, yeah. Now you tell you me for uh, US two. Yeah, correct. He can view the common as well. Now, Ravi, you tell me for US two, what all can he access? Net thirty. Oh no no no! Net forty five. The common is sorry, the US three. Uh, Ravi, I think I typed it wrong. This is US three. Okay, common is US three for only for US three. So as okay. you mentioned, US one is not for uh, common. It is only net thirty and net forty five, and immediate. Uh, sorry, it's a immediate uh, common set. Uh, then okay, what, what did you say? I didn't hear you, uh, uh, Ravi. US two has access to uh, net forty five and net forty five. Net forty five, correct. Net thirty. Where is a uh, net thirty there? There is no uh, for US two. US two, he can access only net forty five and image it. Right? You got. The